everyone welcome to Gent Talk Church thank you for tuning in with us this morning I pray that I hope that you all had a good week and right now we're gonna welcome the Holy Spirit so if you're watching uh, just bow your heads close your eyes and let us welcome the Holy Spirit thank you Lord Heavenly me Father we welcome you in this place Holy Spirit yes. we welcome your presence here I pray that you fill this room Lord fill our hearts Lord and, um, those who are watching Lord God may your presence be um, so vivid, Lord God. Yes. I thank you for what you're doing, Holy Spirit. But you lead this service now. Um, we'll be doing this in our own um, strength, Lord. And um, 
Holy Spirit should be welcome in this place. We um, minister to you, Lord God, to be pleased with what the praise and the worship we bring you, Lord God. The word, Lord, that is um, coming today, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you speak through us, minister through us, Lord God. Each person who hears, Lord, who, um, who witnesses, I pray that you touch them, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that just fill each person who watches, Lord. Yes, Lord. We welcome you. Welcome your presence here. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. We didn't do this without you, Lord. We can't do this without you. So we welcome you in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our friend and helper. Have your way today, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Let your presence remain. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood that cleanses our mind, our mind that allows us to think good thoughts, that have thoughts of you, Lord. We thank you for your blood that was shed, that cleanses our eyes, our ears, our nose and our mouth, Lord. Your blood that cleanses our hands, the work that we do for you, Lord. The blood that cleanses our feet, that it cleanses the path that we walk on. May we walk in your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, may you cleanse our hearts. Make it whole and new again, Father. May we fill our hearts with more of you, yes. of your worship, of your love and of your word, Father. We are eternally grateful for what you have done for us and what you continue to do lord the reason why we get to stand here today to serve you wholeheartedly freely we love you so much lord we love you so much father we give you all the glory and all the praise we worship you father in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. Welcome to Gentile Church, those who just joined. Uh, right now we're going to get into a time of praise and worship. So if you're watching, I encourage you church to get up and clap your hands. Let's praise the Lord today. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. So here we are. Here we 
are in your presence With our lips we sing of your love Love that is enough for all people Forever changing hearts with one touch And I, and I Never know love like this before, no
sing that verse again. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. For thou art exalted far above, O
worship you. Thank you for this privilege we have to worship you, Lord God. We love you, Lord, and we honor you in this place. I pray that you just continue to be the center, Lord, of this service. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you'll lead the service and speak to those who are sharing, Lord. I pray that we just feel your presence so strongly, Lord, throughout, Lord. I pray that everyone who is watching, Lord God, be blessed, be, um, be changed, Lord God. I pray for breakthrough, Lord, for new encounters, Lord. We love you and we bless you. To none of us shall be, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for um, this service, Lord. Have your way, Lord. And be blessed, Lord God, as we minister to you. In Jesus' name, we will say, Amen. Amen. Good morning again. Welcome to Gen 12 Church. All those who have just joined. Um, Right now, we're going to get into a time of ministry. Oh, right, right now, we've got the vision segment coming up, which is a new segment we have. Um, and up next, we have Matthew showing that. Good morning, church. My name is Matt Eli, and I'm one of the leaders here at Gen 12. Uh, right now, I'll be doing the vision segment, and it's where I explain the name Gen 12 and how we first started. So Gen 12, uh, we got it from scripture and it's from Genesis chapter 12, verses one to three. Um, and it reads, Now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now as a church, we believe that uh, the scripture wasn't only meant for Abram, but it was also meant for us. So um, as a church, when God blesses us, we are able to be a blessing to others. And we believe that those who come into our church, um, in whatever gifts they have, talents, uh, that this is a blessing from God. And it is up to us to give that blessing or to share that blessing with others to glorify God. Amen. Uh, how we first started, I guess where we first started was when Reinhard Bonnke, an amazing evangelist, uh, preacher of all, all over Africa. And uh, God had spoken to him to pause his crusade and to come to Melbourne to speak to a group of people and pray over them. And so Reinhard Bonnke came to Melbourne and he did what God told him to do. And amongst, amongst those um, people that he came to in Melbourne, uh, Pastor Ofa Maunga and his wife Anne um, were one of those people. And we believe that right there and then, God had planted a seed in them to start a church. Now, Almost a year later, or just about a year later, um, their daughter, Selena Maunga, our youth pastor, she asked God for a gift. And she asked God to make her a preacher. And this was her 17th birthday. And she wanted to be a preacher. So um, God was moving. He first moved in pastor Ofa. And, and, and that seed was planted and he planted another seed in Selena and she began to do a Bible study with her cousins and her cousins started to invite their friends and their friends started inviting strangers and I was one of those strangers and um, we met up at, uh, at sh my in-laws house um, I have I have married into that family now <laughs> and it started as a little Bible study um, and from then on we started fellowshipping and we started inviting more people and more people started to come and then pastor um, felt that the Lord put on his heart to start a church and then he started Gentile Church and that's how we started um, and from then on 
you know, um, God has blessed us and we have been a blessing to all. And this coincides with um, Jesus' uh, final commandment that he had given to the disciples in Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 18 to 20. And it reads, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have given, that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And so we believe that this is Jesus' commandment to us. And it coincides with uh, Gen 12, Genesis chapter 12, uh, blessed to be a blessing. So that is the vision segment. And right now, I will hand it over to James Kabula and he'll bring us the tithes and offering message. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is James, and today I'll be sharing with you tithes and offering. Uh, so if you've got your Bible, good on you. Uh, if not, I'll give you a second. All right, now that you've got your Bible, um, get you guys to turn to Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 10 and it says will a man rob God yet you have robbed me but you say in what way have I robbed you in tithes and offerings you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me on this and try me now on this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So a little backstory, uh, Grace and I moved into a new place and moving into a new place, we started looking at our budget um, and so I had a look at it and we're seeing that we weren't really putting our tithing at tithes and offering first. Um, and we slowly saw our account savings just um, not really going anywhere. Um, so we decided to change that and um, put our tithes and offerings first. So the first thing that actually comes out of our bank account when we get paid is our tithes and offering. And our financials have been slowly on the increase. Uh, our savings have been increasing and, and yeah, um, just a little testament on how we are financially at the moment. Um, God's really been working in our lives and, and teaching us new ways to save and new ways to, to, put, to, put where, to put our money where it needs to go. And um, I guess to encourage you guys as well to do the same. So whenever you get paid or whenever you get money, um, to put that, to put your 10% and your offerings on top aside um, first, just so that you don't see it in your account anymore and go uh, spend it somewhere. Um, but yeah, I really encourage you guys to do that and and really see, I really hope to see God work in your life as well. So I'll quickly pray. Um, and yeah, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Only Father, Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you for this amazing day that you've given us. I pray that you touch each and every person's heart watching this um, this live, Lord God, today's service. I just feel that people um, need to be reminded about um, their tithes and offerings, Lord Jesus, that we've been hit with a plateau at the moment with everything that's going on. Uh, Lord God, that uh, you give us you give us that cheeky um, slap to the face uh, and remind us. Um, and thank you, Lord Jesus, for just providing for us financially, providing for us spiritually and mentally, Lord God. I pray that you continue to work in our lives. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Good morning, church. It's Selena here, and I'm going to be sharing the communion with you all. Before I do that, I'm just going to quickly pray. 
Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would speak clearly, Lord God, and help me um, to explain, Lord, what it is, Lord, the communion, Lord God, and how to share it with you people. So I thank you so much. I give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so for those of you who may not be familiar with what um, communion is, communion um, was the last supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. And so I'm going to go back a little bit because I felt like the Lord wanted me to explain this to you guys. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse 17, it says, Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And so in here, um, I want to emphasize the word unleavened bread. Uh, the, the communion that Jesus took with his disciples was unleavened. And what does that mean? It was without yeast. And so in saying that, I want to be very clear with you guys. Um, here at Gen 12 Church, we believe um, that we are to follow that example and have unleavened juice and unleavened bread. So what that means is without yeast. And this confirms uh, what we believe that Jesus did not have alcoholic wine during the Passover because you need yeast to have uh, to make alcohol. And you also, which also means that the bread um, that he had would have been without yeast as well because it was the feast of unleavened bread. It was during that time that they had the last supper and they did communion with the Lord. And so I wanted to make that really clear. So when you're going out and you're buying your um, your grape juice, that's what we call it. We, we go and buy grape juice, um, your grape juice, and you'll also get um, bread without yeast. So go into the shops and ask um, if you don't know where to find it. Go and ask one of the workers if they can find it for you. For you. Okay. And so now moving on to the actual um, supper itself and the communion itself. It is all done in remembrance of Christ. So he, um, before he was crucified, Jesus um, had this last supper with his disciples and he told them that the, the grape juice or the wine represents his blood that was going to be poured out for them and for the rest of the world. And he also said, that the bread was significant and represented his body, which was beaten and bruised and broken for us so that we might have healing. And so when we take communion, uh, we take it in remembrance of Jesus and what he suffered, what he did for us. Amen. Because it wasn't an easy thing. He felt everything. He came as a man. Though he was fully God, but he felt everything and every pain that a human being would feel because he came to take our punishment. Amen. And so when we're taking communion today, I want you to do it in remembrance of Christ. I have a couple of scriptures here that I want to share with um, you today. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 28. And this is Paul speaking. And he says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the, of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Amen. So before we go into um, receiving the, the wine, receiving the blood of Christ and doing that in remembrance of him and also before we do um, the receiving of the bread, which represents his body. I want us to take a moment to examine ourselves and to make our hearts right before the Lord. Um, you know, ask the Lord for forgiveness. And as you're receiving it, I want you to receive it in faith, knowing that the blood of Jesus is cleansing, has cleansed away all your sins, has given you the, um, the ability to be forgiven. Amen. And the same with, with um, receiving of the bread. It's all done in remembrance of Christ, what he suffered on our behalf. Amen. So right now, we're just all going to take a moment. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord. We just examine ourselves, Lord, right now. We examine our, our life, Lord God, and the way that we've lived, Lord. We just pray, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness, Lord God, right now. 
in the name of Jesus. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Make our hearts right before you, Lord. Before we take of this, Lord. Before we partake of this, Lord God. We ask that you would just um, cleanse us, Lord God. So we thank you. We thank you for what you've done, Lord Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 25 reads, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to take of the bread, the unleavened bread, the bread without yeast. And we're going to receive this in remembrance of Jesus. Amen. So we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your body which was broken, which was bruised for us, Lord God, which is whipped, Lord for us, Lord God, so that we may receive healing. Your word says that by your stripes, we are healed. We thank you for taking our place on the cross, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for suffering for us so that we may have victory. We thank you for conquering death um, so that we may have life. So we thank you and we receive this in remembrance of you and what you have done, our King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's receive of the bread. Thank you, Lord. And Lord God, we have this one here, and it says here in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your precious blood that was poured out for us. We thank you for the forgiveness that we receive because of your blood, because of your suffering, Lord. We receive, Lord God, we come and we partake, Lord, um, what you have done on the cross, Lord, and we receive it into our lives, Lord. We apply it to our lives, Lord God. But we thank you, Lord. I pray that we will not take for granted the sacrifice that you made, Lord God so that we might live eternally. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have suffered for us, so that we would have eternal life. We give you glory, Lord, and we pray that our lives will reflect the love that we have and the gratitude that we have toward your sacrifice and everything that you have given us. So we thank you, Lord God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we do this in remembrance of you. Let's receive of the wine. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I thank you that as we, your people and your disciples of today, Lord God, have received, Lord, your blood, Lord, and your body, Lord God, into us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will live the way that you have called us to live, Lord that we will live the lives, Lord, that you sacrifice your life, Lord God, so that we could be empowered to live it, Father. So we thank you. We pray that we will live this new creation life and that people will come to know you, Lord, that we will proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again, Lord God, that we will proclaim, Lord, what you suffered, Lord, on our behalf and on behalf of the world, Lord, that you held our sins, Lord, on the cross, Lord, and you took our judgment, Lord God, so that we could have eternal life. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone says, Amen. And coming up next, we have a testimony by John. He's gonna be sharing his testimony about the 15-minute Bible challenge that we've been doing. If you would like to join this Bible challenge, please let me know. It's been very, very beneficial for so many of the um, the church members, and we would love for you to be able to learn to feed yourself daily. Following that testimony, we have Evanda doing the main word. So we hope that today's service blesses you guys. 
Good morning, church. Uh, today I'll be talking about the 15-minute challenge. Um, so what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a Bible reading challenge where you read the Bible and take down notes for 15 minutes. Um, so what it's, um, where we got it from was from uh, Selena preached about it in one of our youth nights where this 74-year-old um, doctor, um, he was telling us, or I told us how um, how he was doing the 15-minute, he was reading the Bible for 15-minute daily um, to get back into it. And, um, you know, eventually he was reading um, from an hour um of um just reading because sometimes you know we we tell ourselves that we don't have time to spend time with god or we don't have time to read the bible but but we really do you know it's just we're just using making up excuses um like we'll spend more time on the phone just looking at social media um, where we could be using that time to, you know, just for 15 minutes to read the Bible and, you know, write down what you got out of it or what you understood from it. Um, and yeah, so we've been... So initially this challenge was for two weeks. Um, Selena challenged the us leaders um, to do it. Uh, and then, you know, two weeks have passed and everyone is still like everyone is still doing it and we managed to involve the youth and the young adults into it and um currently we have like around 30 people doing the challenge um yes yeah, so i really encourage you to do it um yeah so you know before before even starting this challenge it's i guess it's a similar situation for me with um with the doctor um you know you we make excuses or I've, I've made excuses saying i don't have time for this i don't have time to read the bible or I only, i'll only ever read it when you know someone else is preaching about it or when when situation comes but i've never personally spent time to just read the bible myself so i think yeah you know for me this has been like a really great experience um, just knowing the word, uh, word of God more, um, and just you know finding understanding in the things that um, that is written in there. Um, yeah, I feel like my knowledge um, and faith have skyrocketed um, ever since doing this. Like, um, you know, so we have a group chat where we where we keep each other accountable by posting what chapter we've read. Um, you know what what book we're reading, what it's about. Write down. We send our notes, or you know, just like a quick summary of what it's about. Um, nothing too crazy, yeah. And that was just like we do it for fifteen minutes a day, and then somehow, you know, I'm doing, you know, an hour of just reading and noting down the Bible. Like, you know, I would never ex- have expected. <clears throat> you know, spending that much time just to read the Bible, and and yeah, and it just really shows that starting from the smallest bit, like that fifteen minute, you know, it could grow to over an hour, and that's the same with breaking habits or making good habits. And you just make make the smallest effort, but you have to make it constant, um, <clears throat> constantly or like every day, and eventually you'll get to the point where you're spending an hour or you're, you know, you're able to clean your room, um, or, you know, whatever it is that, um, that you want to work on. Um, and yeah, like I really, I really encourage everyone to, to join in. Um, I think uh, Selena, um, if you if you want to join in, um, just message Selena. Um, um, she'll explain what it like and how to do it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me. Like, 
yeah thank you for thank you for watching hey what's up everybody hey <laughs> what's up everybody uh, my name is vanda um, welcome to the word segment we're gonna jump straight in if you don't know who i am my name is Evander james one of my and um before i start i just want to thank you i'll say thanks to those that um entrusted me with this job you know it's a big job doing this and um yeah Thanks to Pastor Offa, aka my my father and Lena and um, also my mom, senior pastors. Thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. Um, and yeah, I just want to honor them. And I'm gonna pray before we start. So if you could bow your head, we're about to pray. We're about to get into this. All right, let's do it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father, for everything, Lord God, and what you're doing. I pray, Holy Spirit, that um, we just completely focus in on you right now, Lord God. Focus in on you, Father, and what you want to say, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that the message will be clear, Lord God, and that um, we'll always be in line with your will. And if we're not, Father, that you would smack us into line, Lord Jesus, and um, say that we'll be back on that narrow path, Father. I pray, Lord God, that the message will just be so clear, Father, and... Um, yeah, we trust you, I trust you, and we praise you, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody says, Amen. Alright, sweet. So, I'm just getting into the title of my message. The title of my message is, it's also kind of like a question kind of thing. It's, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Yeah. So I want you guys thinking like, you know, you know, like the superheroes that you see in the movies, um, you know, the Hulk, you know, get angry, shh, get pretty big, pretty big, pretty buff, you know, um, Thor, you know, call down that lightning, you know what I mean? Just get creative with it, all right? And I want you commenting down in the section, uh, the comment section, um, uh, what superpower you would have, yeah? So right now, as I'm talking, Comment down below what your superpower would be. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. And I want you guys to hold that thought. All right. I want you to hold that thought. And we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Yeah. So if you've got your Bibles, start turning to it, start trying to find it. Uh, Alright, I'm about to read it out. So it is Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, and it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. All right, so you're probably wondering why I read that and um, what it's got to do with my title and everything. And there's a few things that stood out to me in this story. And one thing is that mankind is constantly drawn. It's constantly drawn to things that we don't or can't have. Yeah. 
So it's just like that other saying where, you know, you, like you always, we always want something, yeah? Say it's like an iPhone or something like that. And once we get it, and then a new one comes out, like a brand new iPhone. Yeah, so you got the iPhone 10 and then you get the iPhone 10 and then the next day you get the iPhone 11 comes out and then you're just like, oh, regretting that you got that when you should have just waited one day when the iPhone 11 was coming out, kind of thing. And so man in its nature always desires after things that, um, that we can't have, yeah. And another point, uh, another thing that stood out to me in this story is that Adam and Eve envied God's power yeah and so when the, the Satan was tempting them and he was putting all these different things out like you know your eyes will be opened you know imagine that like imagine being in their shoes and being like whoa we have a chance to actually be like God yeah to be like the one who created it it's like now that's pretty tempting you know what i mean like they would have thought they're like oh man we're, we're about to be on equal footing with god like man we who knows what we'll, we'll be able to do maybe we'll be on you know maybe we'll be just like and we'll be able to create all these things you know who knew who knows what could have been going on up in their minds you know they would have been like like that's a pretty big temptation you know what i mean um and another thing that stood out to me um if you look closely, this is one of my notes that I wrote down. If you look closely throughout the Bible, man is constantly seeking and admiring things beyond our physical capabilities. Yeah. And in this story, you know, it, it's it's even in the Bible days and relevant to, to, to right, like right now. It's man is always constantly seeking for something greater seeking a greater power you know what i mean and i guess that's also that's also one of the reasons why there's so much evil in this world because everyone's always some, seeking for something greater much more than ourselves yeah we're never content with what we have we're just trying to find um and uh, we admire things that we we are unable to do and and our fantasies in our head just keep going crazy like oh imagine if i had this power i could do this kind of thing and um that kind of just leads me to my next point and one of my other notes i wrote down wouldn't it be cool if we could be like um this is just relating back to what i said in my title um that people always how we're always seeking for something greater and then Relating it back to today, um, just seeing how Adam and Eve were back then when they were trying to, um, when they were admiring God's power and then they had a glimpse of like, oh, we could have had that power, you know, and then they ate the fruit and here we are now. And it's kind of just that same mentality for today's age, if you think about it. Like we have all these different superheroes and Marvel characters and DC characters and it's just like, you know, uh, our imagination goes crazy, like thinking, you know, imagine if we had these Iceman powers and all that, you know, you can go into a, a refrigerator and, you know, not freeze because you're already frozen kind of thing, you know, or imagine if you were like, a, you know, lava girl, you know, you could just go over and jump on a volcano and just go for a swim, you know, and well, that's what kind of goes in my mind, but I don't know about you guys, I mean, that's what I'll do if I have those powers, you know, um, but coming back to this like man is always seeking for something more than themselves and seeking and admiring greater powers um there's one superhero that always st stood out to me and i think you guys kind of know like where i'm heading with this is batman right now don't think this is going to be a promotional video for why batman's the greatest hero or even though he is just or not of all, Jesus is number one, but just saying, like, the reason why I like Batman, okay? And it's gonna get biblical, okay? All right, don't throw stones at me yet. All right. <laughs> all right. So, 
the reasons why I kind of like relate to Batman and why I love him and it's my uh, it's my number one go-to superhero you know what I mean is that he doesn't seek for some amazing power yeah he doesn't seek for some amazing power like Superman when you go fly around you know just boom you know punching through wars people whatever you know he's got all his great powers um, but one of the things I do like about him is that um, but he looks at what he does have and utilizes it to utilizes it utilizes it to its fullest potential yeah and so you know if you look at what he's got he's got no powers you know he's got his little battering things and he uses that master's how to throw it you know what i mean just like whoosh. and if you were there at my 21st birthday you know you know i had some of those myself and you know i had a those gauntlet things yeah if you were there at my birthday you know, you know what i mean you know i had a few skills myself but besides the point um, what I'm trying to get at is that he utilizes everything that he has to its fullest potential. Yeah, he doesn't go seeking around for some antidote to give him that, you know, that brawn like Captain America, you know, super soldier serum, you know, fast running kind of stuff. But he looks for what he has and accepts who he is and he, he utilizes things around him and what he has. Yeah. And so the kind of, kind of the point that I want to get across to everyone um, by using him as an example is that sometimes we can focus so much. Sometimes we can focus so much on what we don't have or could have that it blinds us from seeing and valuing the tools God has given us. Yeah. So what tools or power has the Holy Spirit given us? Yeah. So if we think about, if we just pull back and think about the things that God has already put in our hands. Yeah. What has the Bible um, said that God has given us? He said, Jesus said, when he goes, the Holy Spirit will come. And so we've got to ask ourselves, what is it that the Holy Spirit brings now, if, if we go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, it says, 5, 22 to 23, and we've read this a lot, and a lot of us know what the fruits of the spirits are. And I'm just going to read it out right now. So it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Yeah. So these are the things that God has given us. And the thing that I like about Batman is that he looks around at what he has and he brings it out to its fullest potential. And what I was kind of challenged at and what I've kind of been practicing throughout the weeks is the fruits of the spirit and bringing it out to its fullest potential. Yeah. Um, so one of my notes that I write down is, do you know that these things are greater than any superpower you could ever have? Do we actually comprehend how powerful the fruits of the Holy Spirit are? Yeah, I think for like us nerds out there and us weebs when we watch anime and watch like, uh, you know, um, Marvel, DC, anything like that, we're always like admiring like, oh man, he's so powerful, you know, he took on this guy, you know, Luffy when he punched that, you know, threw that punch at Kaido and then, you know, he went flying and it's just like, you know, or when, when uh, Batman took on Superman and gave him a hiding with the kryptonite, you know. Um, or when Superman, like, like took on, what's the name? Darkseid or something? Darkseid, whatever his name is, you know. And he gave him a one-two hit a quitter, you know, because he's, he's just that strong, you know what I mean? Um, but we can get so caught up 
in what we don't have and admiring what we we can't have yeah because it's in our nature to um admire those things yeah even from back in the days um adam and eve from the very beginning they were admiring what they couldn't have um and it, it just gets going in the head and it kind of just blinds us to what we do have and how powerful the things around us or what the god what god has actually given us yeah and like i'm just challenging everyone like how much like do we realize how powerful the things that the holy spirit has given us like do we realize like actually realize how powerful they are um some of the things that i wrote down is just imagine always having peace yeah so this is the fruits of the spirit that i'm just going through and i was i was thinking about it. i was like man like when you try to bring out the fullest potential of something and when it comes to the fruits of the holy spirit it's like peace okay how can i utilize peace to its fullest potential like when i was thinking about it and, and the story of um of jesus when he was on the boat and he was sleeping and there was a storm all around and everyone was just panicking running around like and he was just you know sleep in the boat and they woke him up because everyone was scared you know the disciples and, and then jesus woke up and he just commanded the storm to calm yeah and i was like man imagine if we had that level of peace like that right there in itself that is a superpower without us realizing these are supernatural powers that the holy spirit has given us and it's just a matter of us um, relying on him and bringing out its fullest potential in our lives and i also wrote down imagine being able to endure through suffering and still remain in the lord and i'm t and when i wrote this down it was referring to long suffering the fruit of long suffering so like if we had that we would be able to endure and actually valued long suffering and the understanding of it and not just reading it but perceiving it and understanding it like the the possibilities of the endurance that we we would have if we could only comprehend how powerful the fruits of the spirit are like imagine that being able to suffer through so much and still remain in god like that's what that's uh that's supernatural power man like that is real power when you're able to go through life and life is just picking at you and kicking you and you know all the trials and temptations is just coming your way but you're able to endure through that journey you're able to go through that suffering and all that pain and still say that god is good that is a supernatural power man like that to me is powerful beyond measure and a lot of times when when i i talk about when it comes to suffering when i think a misconception that people get a lot when coming into christianity they 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 have this perception that life around them is going to get say easier and everyone is just going to change around them but they always forget that um you know jesus tells us that you know first we've got to take the speck out of our own eye and it's in us where the change happens first yeah and that it's not that everything around us is getting easier it's just that us in ourselves when jesus enters into us he makes us stronger yeah because you got to remember that the nat the the path to heaven is narrow yeah and the gate to hell is wide and so that that tells us that it's not an easy journey yeah it's actually really hard but the reason we're able 
to see things and circumstances and trials and tribulation as getting easier it's not because everything else is around you is getting just you know it might look that way like it's getting easier but really it's just us getting stronger yeah because when the holy spirit enters into us he gives us that ability to go through that long suffering and being able to take the hits and keep going the holy spirit is the one that gives us that supernatural power to endure through all that yeah so it's not that things are around you are naturally going to get um easier uh, it's really a misconception that like that happens it's just that god like i'm not saying that it's not going to get easier like if you pray then you know um god will come through but the point that i'm trying to get across is that the gate to heaven or the path to heaven is narrow it's small and it's not supposed to be easy if it was easy um this christian walk then everyone would be on it you know it would be walking into heaven's gates you know it'd be massive but it's not it's narrow it's small and only few will make it there and so we've got to know that it's the christian walk isn't supposed to be easy but god the holy spirit when he comes inside of us he makes us stronger and we end up being above our problems and that's when it becomes easy yeah so when when you start off with um the, in your walk yeah you just got saved say your problems are about here and this is you you just started it out a lot of people think that oh you know the christian walk is done everything's just going to come down to my below me to to your level but no when you come into christ yeah you just start walking and life is not going to come down here okay what's going to happen is that jesus takes us above yeah and it's sad to see when people get just get saved and then life is still up here and they have this whole misconception that man isn't life supposed to come down here you know where it's nice and easy for me to just you know trample on it no when jesus comes into our lives he makes us conquerors yeah so there's there's steps to it to getting above that and once you're above those problems say so these these are problems hi hi my name's problems hi i'm the person that's trying to conquer it yeah once you are above the problems that's when you're able to trample on it and that's when it becomes easier yeah and so when it comes to long suffering you have to be able to endure through that time of um of trials and tribulation yeah the holy spirit is the one that gives us that power to become above um all our trials and all our tribulations so that it seems smaller yeah it's because god made us stronger to and makes us overcomers um and so my, ne my next point um imagine being able to endure through long suffering no I already read that. All right. Imagine having an endless amount of joy. Yeah, so this one's talking about the joy of the Lord. Like if you think about it, the joy of the Lord, I wrote down here the scripture. Um, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, it says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. And so when the Holy Spirit enters us, He gives us that joy. Like, do we fully comprehend the power of joy? Yeah, we could be going through so much and still nothing being able to take away that joy from within us. That's supernatural. That's powerful. That is a superpower to me. And um, it should be for all of us Christians because so many things can strip away our joy. So many things can strip it away. And I think it just really comes down to what you value the most. Yeah. Who is your joy? Is it your family? Is it the your career? Is it something that... Um, and you'll definitely know what where your joy is. Yeah. Say if you got someone, a loved one taken away, and then boom, your joy is gone. That, 
that is not the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Because our joy should be in Him. And when our joy is in Him, it doesn't matter what gets taken away from us. It doesn't matter what happens around us. Nothing is able to strip that away. That is the supernatural power. And that is the superpower of joy that the Lord gives us. And that is what, like, man, imagine having that, always being joyful, never letting anything take that away from you. Like, nothing's going to be able to strip that from you. Like, that's supernatural power. You know what I mean? And so, um, another one I wrote down. Imagine having complete self-control. We'll be able to achieve anything we set our mind to. Yeah. So this is another fruit of the Holy Spirit. When He enters us, He gives us self-control. And if we just like just as i wrote down here like if we had self-control over every single decision that we would make man we would be we would be famous you know doing all these things we'll be so productive there'll be no such thing as as laziness no such thing as uh, uh procrastinating or procrastination um it would just be like when the Holy Spirit enters you, man, and He gives you all these things, we just need to know the values, the value of the tools that God has given us, yeah? That we need to stop looking so far out and beyond, um, like, hey, man, imagine if I had this power and if I could do this and that. No, nah, man, God has already given us the power that we, we need in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he gives us these things. Um, and another thing that I wrote down um, is that Jesus, like the really cool thing about like superpowers and us talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit right now is that Jesus actually had everything. Yeah, he had that the power to walk on water he was healing the sick and he had all the fruits of the spirit all those characteristics and the crazy thing to me is that is that he out of all the power that he had he decided to show us the greatest power of all and that was the power of love the power of his love for us and he displayed that on the cross. Yeah. You see, Jesus, he could have killed, easily could have killed those people that were crucifying him, that were accusing him of, of all these different things. He could have easily done it. Yeah. And he actually said to Peter, when Peter was trying to stop them from taking Jesus, um, he grabbed his sword out and he just like, boom, you know, shanked someone's ear and then the, the ear was gone. And so Jesus, when he saw that, you know, he stopped him and he told him. And I wrote down here in Matthew chapter 26, verse 53, he told Peter, Do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? see God had the power he had, the, he had all these different superpowers like it didn't like it's just crazy if you really think about it that he had the all the powers the supernatural powers to create and do all these things and he made the fig tree wither and all that and out of all the power that he tried to put across to us was the most important was the power of love yeah he could have easily stopped the people that were crucifying him and just boom you know just perish but no he decided to humble himself and and come down to our level and show us the greatest power of all which is also in the holy spirit and it was the power of love yeah
And so I kind of just want to, that's kind of the thing that I, I wanted to emphasize, emphasize, emphasize on the most. And is that, man, if you were to ask me, like, like, what is the greatest superpower? Like, not the greatest, but what is the superpower that I would want to have? Man, Jesus already showed that to me. He already showed that to us, the Christians, on the cross. And that that is actually the greatest superpower of all. It's the superpower of love. And everything else that follows from the Holy Spirit, what He gives us, self-control, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, all those things, those are supernatural powers that the Holy Spirit gives us. And we need to value those things because, man, if there were like, if we actually had, you know, powers like Superman or Wonder Woman, all those, like, man, Spider-Man, you know, sh 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 what's that thing he does? Sh <laughs> He's swinging around everywhere. Like, man, there would still need to be someone to come down and die for us. Because that's the power of love, yeah? And that's the power that the world needs to know about. And that's the one that we should value the most. Because even if all these sup supernatural um, people had these powers and could freeze time and all these things, like, man, none of that would have mattered at all. Like, all that becomes irrelevant if there is no love. And because if there's no love, then there's no purpose. And then there's no purpose, there's... You might as well become atheist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, because that's that's the love that God tries to reveal to us, and I hope that you got something from this. Is that the value in the fruits of the spirit right here in His Word? Like, <laughs> by pen, like His Word. This right here is the superpower. Like you you gonna get every superpower that you need in this right here, okay? I'm telling you. But um, that's the main thing I wanted to share. Is that you know, out of all the superpowers, God's power of love is the strongest and the most valuable out of all power. And um, yeah, man, that's about it. I hope you got something from this. Um. And if you're uh, someone new here and you want to give your life to Christ, uh, I'm just going to say the sinner's prayer. And yeah, if you feel prompted in your heart to say this prayer with me, and you feel like you know it's really spoken to you, this word, um, then say this prayer and repeat after me. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for sending your son to die for me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And so I turn and repent from all my sins, Lord God. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you come into my heart and live in me. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you for tuning into church and staying around for this word segment. If you made it this far to the end, man, props to you because you got a good attention span. <laughs> um... But yeah, that's it. Um, you guys have a good week. Stay safe. Stay in contact with people. Don't go astray. All right, fellowship after this thing turns off. All right, and we're going to see you next week. All right. Adios.